Hello, welcome to Miniature Rounds. My name is Stuart and welcome to Epic Battles Napoleonic Stroke Waterloo vlog number seven, I believe. Um, it's been a few weeks now since I did a vlog update. I've been away on holiday. I've been doing um, lots and lots of um, painting epic battles Napoleonic stuff for work, unfortunately. So it's not something I shared with, with you guys yet. Um, I use the same paint schemes and stuff anyway, so it might not be a project that I share too much. We'll see. Um, and um, yeah, I've been chipping away a little bit in the background. I have been working away at my own units, but I've been kind of doing mass batch painting really to try and get myself up to a stage where I've got a couple of small brigades so I can actually have some games. Um, I've been watching um, loads of you who um, who are in the, the Facebook groups, watching you with your big armies growing and growing and, and realizing that I'm putting out all this content and, and things and, uh, and as usual I'm getting behind with my own forces and that's just the nature of, of busy family life and and YouTube being as much as a hobby in some ways as, as the actual gaming is itself um, so there are some times when I'm doing um, videos and I'm choosing to do videos it's not a violin moment choosing to do a video um, over painting um, a unit for myself so to speak um, just because it takes a little bit longer to do a painting tutorial but I really enjoy doing them as well so it's a bit of a bit of a mix here or there. Um, it will come to the point soon where I've done a nice smattering of um, painting tutorials over over the, the course of um, all of the armies. I've got some Prussian ones lined up. Um, I've got a couple more, a couple of French um, cavalry line, lined up. I'm not going to do every single unit. There's so many different types and different colour schemes for different regiments, um, and it will get to the point where you can pretty much predict um, the kind of colours and things I'm going to use, and you have to make your own decisions on colours based on the regiments you're painting anyway. So it's once you've got the kind of the techniques and things that I'm using down, if you so wish to follow them, um, then me repeating them and doing them for, for multiple regiments won't always be useful. But anyway, what have I been doing? So in the last few weeks, I've managed to purchase, well, actually get quite a good swap deal on a 3D printer. It's not the latest model, but it's an Elegoo Mars 2 Pro. It's a 2K um, resin printer, and that is, you know, more than good enough for doing some pretty good quality gaming miniatures. Um, and I've wanted one for a while. Um, I've put it off for a while and I didn't really get it so much with Epic Battles in mind, maybe more for, for some of my other projects, um, but definitely for smaller scale miniatures. So I've been snooping around for, for, for things to print just to test it out really. And I haven't fully nailed everything down yet. I'm getting to the point now where I've got my settings just about right. I think I'm getting um, full prints without fails and mistakes too often on there at all now. So I have been looking around at a few files and I thought, well, what, what do I need for Epic Battles that I haven't got already? And it, there's nothing really I, I, I'm desperate for at the moment, especially when we've got more releases coming. But I wouldn't have minded a couple of different officer styles. Um, so I, I looked looked on online and, and picked up a couple of officers, and I'll show you in a moment. And then when I was looking around, I remembered someone had shared um, their their th STLs in the in the uh, Epic group that I run on Facebook and um, I went and searched it out and they've got quite a few things as well. Now, I'm not going to do a review of both of these two company stroke designers at this moment in time. One of them is a bigger company I believe that does lots of Kickstarters and things. One of them is a bit smaller. They've both got wide range of Napoleonic stuff but I'm just going to show you what I've printed and what I've got now um, and then I may return to it as a subject as a, as a later video a non-vlog video when I've printed a few more things off and I've got a little bit better with my printer um, and I will um, print off a selection of things maybe maybe buy a few files a few of the, the the free sample files and do a little bit of a video on how to expand epic armies whether that's American Civil War or um, Napoleonic period and how to get fill some of those gaps etc but let's have a little closer look at some of the things I've been printing so I printed off um, a couple of mounted British officers from a company that I've seen a lot of Kickstarters for and they appear on Facebook all the time. They've got a Facebook page, I believe, as well. So Napoleonic STL files, I think, or Napoleonic STLs. And they've got quite a few different bundles and things and they're all individual miniatures as far as I can tell. Um, they do them in 28mm and 15mm. And I read in the comments on one of their Facebook page um, replies that they recommend if you print one of the 15, or print, sorry, a 28mm at 52% um, 
um, and then you, you you should be the right size for Epic. Um, I tried that at first. It did seem one of them. One of these two officers here seemed a little bit too large at first. So I think I did one at forty six percent and one at forty four, um, and um, but they match up pretty well. Um, so almost identical to to Wardle's sort of scale at that point. And I should have one to hand. But as I said, this isn't a full review. Take my word for it. Um, but this is a British officer in a bicorn. A popular image in the corner now of the of the of the file so to speak of the image on their website um, they have they're removable from the from the horses so you can switch them around for a little bit more variety oh, he's, uh, he's jumping lump, leaping up on his saddle a little bit there um, but um, they're pretty good they are you can tell they're designed for for, for 28 mil I think it's the same with the 15 mil ones as well that the detail is really fine so the swords and things are, are quite breakable um, let's look at the the next guy so this one's in a Belgic Chaco I haven't fully cleaned them all up yet and there's a couple of minor misprint parts where they're really nicely detailed miniatures the horses print very well um, um, so you know they've come out pretty good to be honest with you you know more than good enough once they're painted to use as alternative officers and that was my idea for it really um, as you know if you've followed the previous vlogs of starting to use the officers not only as brigade commanders but also as a mounted colonel on a little command base behind my units so I was going to need more than you actually get on the frames um, and this just gives me two more designs that I can mix throughout the army um, and mix into command stands with the with the wall or plastic ones um, but I, I'm pretty happy with them I'm glad I bought the file I'm definitely gonna get my money's worth out of it I think they were 12 pounds or something like that um, you probably see the, sc the price on the screen now because I'll have added the photo later but um, th the amount of times I'll have printed them they will be more than more than worth it if you only wanted to print them once then maybe they're a little bit pricey um, but you're obviously not going to do that with 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 those now I believe there are a few people that have commercial um, licenses for for the, this this brand um, and I know there are also people out there who will companies who will print for you if you purchase the SDL so if you know you want wanted to buy this file and you wanted 10 of each or something like that for your whole to go across your whole army um, 12 pound plus whatever they ch the, the company charges you, you you may well still find that they're, they're, they're more than enough good value um, compared to maybe buying minifigs or something like that so you know yeah, you, you pay your money for what you want at the end of the day but I'm happy with these these are a, a more of a kind of modern design than you get with with some of the older metal miniatures and it's much more in in line with the quality of the Warlord scops and things so I'm, I'm pretty happy with those too so next up is MC Miniatures um, and they have a, a, a store or within or available via wargaming3d.com <laughs> I don't know how this all, all, all works but it looks like it's a, a, a place where multiple um, designers can upload their work and have their own little mini shop front so to speak and then you just purchase the files um, and, and they do quite a lot of stuff that's um, designed for epic so inverted commas are actually saying small 15 millimeter um, with epic scale um, now it's not a lot I really need um, for, for my armies um, because I think we'll have covered it and then the gaps that maybe I would like something something like a um, more peninsula style British with with stovepipe shako they're not available yet from this designer he, you know he's done he's done a lot large range of stuff a lot of 28 mil lots of six mil as well um, but he did have a smattering of things and I thought well I'll purchase a couple of files anyway why not practice him a printing on my printer I might, well, might as well print something that's you know, designed to work with epic scale um, and it's, it's some kind of information I can pass on to you guys um, they do do um, Russian infantry I'm gonna be putting some images on the screen as I'm yabbering away they do do some Russian so people who maybe wanted a Russian army they do do some standard Russian infantry they've started some other things as well so it's worth keeping an eye on what what he's doing I definitely will be um, but I did pick up some some riflemen um, and I picked up I did pick up some standard British line as well just as a bit of a comparison whether I'll ever use them or not I don't know because I've got so much of the wall or plastics and I actually prefer uh, the wall or plastics but they do give you some alternatives we'll discuss that in a moment let's look at look at the rifleman first um, and you get um, a file with these with these miniatures in um, so here's the rifleman and as you can see they're pretty good they're pretty good I think they they there's some things about them that I I prefer maybe to the Warlord stuff. I do 
overall I think I do prefer the Warlord sculpts. Um, they're a little bit crisper as you'd expect. Um, but these are pretty good and pretty passable and they don't fall into that category of aging metal sculpts and, and, and I don't mean to offend anyone with that but um, as someone who's you know played a lot of different war games um, you do get kind of spoilt on some of the, the science fiction and fantasy manufacturers out there and they're quite the standard of their sculpting and things is is amazing so when you, you you come back to historical war gaming some of it is absolutely incredible and just as good like your Perry's and things but there are some smaller companies out there especially in smaller scale where yeah, the, the miniatures are a lot more um, uh, practical and usable there rather than kind of blow you away stunning and that's one of the things that attracted me to Epic Battles was, was how good the sculpts were. I'm not talking about the accuracy of the people that don't like them for certain whatever reason um, but I really like the aesthetic and the look and um, these 3D prints remind me of that enough. And then what don't we have? With with the plastic stuff from, from Warlords we don't have many riflemen because you need to buy um, Highlanders to get your riflemen. That's the only sprue they're on. I have enough Highlanders to cover the kilted regiments already um, and I don't want mine buying the odd extra box for some extra riflemen but I thought it's going to get a bit expensive. Now I'm only putting two on a, on a base but I also thought about repainting some of them as just standard British light as well. So having a file where I can print off some extra skirmishing riflemen and paint some of them as skirmishing British line like these guys here is, is perfect for me. So I own the file now and I'll be printing the, these skirmishes off. Um, they do do Voltigers and stuff as well, but I think it might, you know, because they're on every standard um, French infantry spree, you'll be well covered there. And there seem to be plenty enough Jaegers on all of the Prussian ones as well. Um, let's go look at the last couple of sculpts. As I said, they're, they're, they're not perfect, but I quite like them. And if I'd bought these as a metal miniatures or something, I'd quite like them as well. So um, I'm a fan, I'm a fan. And they're, they're, they're filling a small gap there. There's miniatures that exist, but in terms of affordability, um, you might be looking at minifigs or alternative armies or something like that now. But if you have a 3D printer or you're prepared to buy the files and get someone to print them for you or use one of those companies that print, then um, this is perfect, I think thinking I think that the Napoleonic ST files um, STLs do self-printed versions as well I may be wrong but I think they do and in the last two you've actually got a rifle officer which is something you don't have with the wall of plastics um, a little trumpeter there as well and um, and I thought about using these to make my little command stands out of so I've already shown you the one in my previous vlog the mounted guy so with the ranked up rifle battalion especially the King's German Legion um, if I want to have someone representing that colonel behind, yes, they probably be mounted, but I quite like the idea of them being on foot. Um, I can base them up like this and have them behind my regiments and use them in the same way. So I've got some use for them. So I'm pretty happy with my purchase of these. They print them out well enough. I'm sure that if any of you are veteran 3D printers out there, you'll be looking at them and thinking, and just like miscast there, or the, you know, they should be crisp. But I get that. I'm still still learning the, the trade of 3D printing, so to speak. A little extra here and um, they come with the, the standard infantry come with flagpoles um, this is the standard size they're not long enough really I'm not quite sure what's going on there um, they wouldn't really work and when I show you the miniatures in a minute you'll see there's guys with the hands open for them to fit into which they don't quite fit but um, but if you remember back a couple of vlogs ago and I talked about using changeable flags that for some regiments that the, the only identifier of them will be their their facings and that they share those facings colors with other regiments and in different scenarios I might want them to represent different units and if I could just switch the flags over that would be perfect so I looked at um, making using spearheads and things to make a fanion and a top of a flagpole that I could just slot over um, and as part of the file you actually get flagpoles now these are printed at standard epic size and these are at 110% they're still a little bit small so I'm going to knock it up to 120 and then I will have enough of these I think um, to to do what I wanted to to actually have those spare flags with the fanion part of the top cut off halfway down so the other half of the flag will just sl slot over the pole and if you don't know what I'm talking about if you check back a couple of vlogs ago you'll you'll, you'll see which brings you on to these guys. So you'll, you'll notice I've, I've, they're not stuck down. I've just lined them up. They, they, they come on these little strips of five. And the set gives you enough that you can uh, 
have them as a full batch of 80 so they're obviously designed as an alternative or as an addendum to your, your, your epic battles miniatures out there um, so I printed them off just out of interest really um, I probably should have bought the Russian file and gone with that instead because it needs to be something different because I, I, as I said I'm probably not going to use these I've got so many plastics for British for World Order and I, I can't see me using anything other than those but hey ho um, let's have a, a, a wee look at what you get um, so there's your your command you've got your two flag pairs next to each other uh, officer drummer and a sergeant i believe no it's a musket i thought it was a shark sergeant with a, a spontoon um i'm not going to show you every sculpt you can look at the renders on the on the website if you really really want to and as i said this isn't a review but just to give you an idea but they're, they're cool they're, they're pretty cool and they match quite well and i'll give you a little hint of what's coming out later on in this video but um, you can see size wise, they match up very well. Um, and you can always adjust the size in your slicing software anyway. Um, but I think the size works and you could quite easily order what you wanted and um, send it off to a 3D printing company for you if you wanted to print it. Um, but um, they're definitely usable. The thing is they're, they're standard British line in the same period as, as the ones we have from Warlords. So they don't really offer anything different. As I said, I printed them more to, to test my printer out and to share with you guys a little bit. Um, they do have some things that aren't covered by Warlord yet and some different um, poses and stuff. They added some Prussian stuff, I think, before the Prussians were released, so you can get them now. But again, I, I love the Warlord Prussian stuff and the plastics are such good value. I'm not sure why you'd, you'd, you'd go down this route unless you have a, a printer yourself, I suppose. Um, but for armies that um, Warlord don't do and look like they may not, never do, um, I'll be keeping an eye on the Russians. Um, I'll be keeping an eye out to see if he does any Austrians. I'd love for him to do some Spanish and some Portuguese, and as I said, some some British um, infantry with um, stovepipes, just to mix the odd unit in to add a little bit of peninsula flavour. I don't think I'd do a whole peninsula army based on it. I still like my Wardle ones, but um, the options are there. So I will be definitely be keeping an eye on on, on the, this this designer. And I know he posts in the the, the Epic Battles group on Facebook that. I'm part of there's a link um, permanently should be in the in, in the show description now and the last thing which you spotted a moment ago was I got round to painting um, the 79th Cameron Highlanders um, and they will be appearing in a few days after this a couple of days after this should be the next video probably after this um, in a painting tutorial I know it's one that's been requested an awful lot as a Highlander one um, and I also painted um, guides to do the uh, black watch and the uh, the 92nd as well the tartans really more than anything else so it's all included in, in, in the one sort of video um, so I'll talk a lot more I don't want to talk too much about why or how I painted them because I'll save that for the for the painting guide so to speak but I thought I'd give you a little taster of of what they were like um, the tartan itself um, is quite hard to do because of the dominant colors um, it seems to have four main colours, the tartan for the for the 79th. Um, and it's too small to really do it properly to do it justice. So what I've gone with is a way of representing it without actually trying to copy it, which is the right thing to do with miniatures of this scale. Um, but I had a lot of fun doing it. And um, my wife, even my wife came in and, and said, I can't believe you've painted tartan on the uh, <laughs> on the kilts. And she was quite impressed. And she she's very rarely impressed by uh, than anything I do with, with miniature stuff. She's supportive of my hobby and uh, she knows it keeps me out of trouble. And she uh, likes games and things but um, she doesn't get the miniatures side of it, just doesn't see the attraction um, and doesn't definitely doesn't like the smaller scale stuff at all. She just doesn't, doesn't you know, if I paint something larger, she'll often say, oh, it looks nice. These she just doesn't get, but she was she was impressed, which is uh, which is always nice. It doesn't happen very often. Um, I'll pop some some images up on the screen now with the um, with the Highlanders rather than just show you these. As I said, the painting tutorial out will out probably be out two three days after this video goes out. Um, for those of you who have been waiting on it. And as I said, a bit of a short up to date, really. Not loads and loads going on. I am still chipping away painting regiments in the background. As soon as I've got enough on both sides, a couple of brigades on both sides, with maybe one one regiment of cavalry aside and a couple of guns, I will. Um, the plan is to play a couple of games with my son and get start getting some battle reports on the channel. It's been a goal for a while, but um, it's the time and having enough. 
talking to the armies with two sides. But anyway, thanks very much for watching. Hope you're all getting on well with your projects. It seems like so many of you are storming ahead of me. Um, um, if you, you're new to the channel and if you found this, this, this video first, there's lots of Epic Battles Waterloo um, content on the channel so go and check it out lots of unboxings reviews painting tutorials um, lots of similar for the american civil war release of the same thing there's some bolt action there's middle earth there's all kinds of stuff on there so give it a look um, if you like the video um, consider giving us a like and maybe subscribe as well anyway thanks very much for watching take care and i'll catch you soon